This month, I set out to spend zero dollars on anything non-essential. And bestie, we learned a lot in a very short amount of time. For someone who spends hundreds of dollars every month on going out to eat and getting myself fancy little coffees, one of the hardest parts for me this month was telling myself, Mel, we have coffee at home. Thank goodness for Nespresso because she got me through this month. I probably told myself every day this month, Mel, we have food at home. Now I wasn't perfect. I did end up going out to eat a couple of times and I will tell you all about it, I promise. So you can do your no spend challenge in whatever way works for you. For me, I decided to go full no spend because I knew that my no spend challenge was gonna turn into a low spend challenge regardless of like the rules that I set out. So I set out to spend zero dollars on anything non-essential. I decided to do that because I wanted to really think about any exception or any cheat that I was doing. I didn't really want to give myself too much buffer and too much room to be like, oh, this is like within my $100 budget of, you know, eating out this month or things like that. So I decided to go like cold turkey. So that means no coffees out, no takeout, no dining out, no alcohol, no going to the movies, no entertainment, no travel, no buying clothes, no buying beauty products, like anything non-essential was just a no-go. So that worked for me because I ended up just cheating a couple of times. So it really, I really succeeded at what I wanted to do, which was to do like a very low spend challenge, almost no spend. So those were my rules, but you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of this personal challenge. I did the first 10 days of the month absolutely perfectly. I did not buy anything non-essential. My first cheat was on February 10th when I rented some cross-country skis. I decided this was worth it because it got me outside, it got me doing some physical exercise, and I was spending time with my partner. After skiing, we went to this cafe. I'm gonna be totally honest with y'all. I kind of forgot that I was doing this low spend challenge and I bought myself a London Fog. I made an exception to go for brunch with some old coworkers because I really don't see them that often, but I just made sure to keep my bill really reasonable. Okay, so what did I spend in February? I'm not gonna spend that much time telling you because I honestly spent so little, so let's just go for it. So my total was $1,737. I am shook by that number because it is less than half of what I normally spend and it is just shocking to me that I was able to live on that number. So I'm gonna be thinking about that for a while, but let's just go through it. So for home, I spent $856. Most of this is rent. For groceries, I spent $500, which is a little bit higher than usual, but it's mainly because I was eating at home all month long. Transportation, 170. This was also a bit higher because I paid just over $100 for my annual AMA membership this month. Subscriptions and phone, 112. Health, 45. Takeout and restaurants, 24. This was one brunch. Business expenses, $14. This was half of a book to give away for our podcast. Gifts and charity, $10. So I always donate $10 every month to the Calgary Food Bank and it's just recurring. Coffee, $6. So I bought one coffee. It was actually London Fog. Travel, $0. Very proud. Beauty, $0, very proud. Clothing, $0, very proud. Entertainment, $0, very proud. So my total was $1,736. I also invested $1,300. And then I was able to put away $2,000 into my new car fund. I will say the second $1,000, I did have to not pay off some of my credit card. So I will have some more credit card bills to pay in March, but I really wanted to hit that $2,000, so we just made it happen. But honestly, I'm so proud of how little I spent this month, and it's showing me that I can really live with a lot less. So it's February 2nd, and this no spend challenge has already been a little bit challenging. So this morning, thankfully, my sister offered to pay for my coffee, which was very nice of her, so I didn't have to pay for that, but I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Cause like, I had a coffee date scheduled for her, or with her, and then right now, I'm about to go work at the library for a bit, and I've been out like all afternoon. I really should have brought a water bottle with me, but I didn't, and I know that like technically I could buy a water because that's a necessity, but like, I'm fine. I'm just used to drinking like a lot of water, so I don't think I'm gonna buy anything, but that's annoying. 
usually I would like get myself a little drink too before coming to the library. And also it's Friday evening and after I'm done my work here, old me, or I guess January me, would have gone to South Center because the library I'm going to is right next to it. So I would have probably gone shopping for my Friday night activity. But we're staying strong and we're we're starting off strong, you know? Like I can kind of get weak later, but not yet. I just started. I just finished my work week and honestly it was such a hard week. And usually when I'm having a bad time, I will give myself permission to order takeout or to go shopping or like to do anything that really like soothes me. So to not do any of that is challenging, but I am gonna have a night in to myself. I'm gonna make myself a nice dinner and I'm gonna watch Real Housewives of Miami. I just started watching it. I started watching it from season four because that's when like the reboot was. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard so far, it just is. But I'm still feeling good, good about it. I'm trying to like remember why I'm doing it, you know? Which I'll share more about as the challenge goes on. So it is February 7th. And so far I have done my low spend challenge perfectly. I have not bought anything non-essential in these last seven days. And I'm very proud because we're off to a great start. And it's been challenging, but not impossible. I mean, it's only been seven days, but I have noticed how many times I gravitate towards spending money to make myself feel better or to like soothe myself. So I will use things like getting a coffee to like lure myself out of the house and be like, I'm having a bad day. So like go treat yourself or wanting to online shop. Or I guess like it's really illuminated for me how much I rely on little treats for my mental health but I've been getting through it. And so I think that this challenge is doing exactly what it needs to do. But so far I feel really good with how little I've spent this month and that I have not broken my rules for myself. Although I do know I will break them. So like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be perfect and I was never intending to be perfect, but on February 7th, let the record state that we are on track. Okay, so it is February 11th, and so far my low spend challenge has been going amazing. I've been doing so well. There's only been two instances where I've spent on non-essential things, and one of them is like very justified. I will tell you about it, but so far so good. I have been just killing it with not buying anything non-essential. I mean, except for those two little things, but again, I never said that I was gonna be perfect. It's called a low spend challenge, not a no spend challenge. I have been a little bit bored. There's been some times where I've been like, oh, I just feel like going to the mall or online shopping or going out to eat. I will say that Mac's parents, uh, we went out with Mac's parents for dinner. We went to Native Tongues and they picked up the bill, which I was very grateful for because we got to have like a really nice meal out and it was just so fun. And I was able to do that because I, it wasn't on my dime. Mac was planning to pay for my portion and treat me. And yeah, so that, I was very grateful for for that and one time my sister bought me a coffee someone else bought me a coffee mac bought me a blizzard one time so i have been getting treated a little bit which is making it a lot easier we're you know part way through the challenge i guess like a third of the way through the challenge is that true almost halfway almost halfway through the challenge so it's been great so far i'm very proud of myself let's keep up the momentum mel Okay, so this morning I had to get gas and it was so funny. I was so excited to literally tap my credit card and to spend money on gas because I'm missing that feeling. There's gotta be some sort of scientific evidence around like the dopamine hit that you get when you literally tap your credit card because it's something that I've been missing this month and it's good for me to be aware of that because obviously that's not like the healthiest way to get dopamine but it was really funny this morning like when I, I I was like at like a quarter tank so I could have let it go a little bit longer but I was craving spending money so I went and bought gas and that's where we're at that is the excitement that I am needing this low spend month so if that tells you anything about how things are going hi cuties it is February 13th wanted to do a little check-in this low spend challenge has been going very well, honestly. 
it has really shown me that I gravitate towards spending money when I want to soothe myself or to make myself like feel better and so far this month I've actually had a pretty good month and so it's like hmm maybe I don't need to spend money to make myself feel better like there's so many things that are free of charge that can help my mood you know so so far it's going really well I still have only done those like two non-essential purchases everything else has been essential and my spending for the month has been very lean it's payday this week and I am excited because one of the reasons I'm doing this low spend challenge is so I can save up some cash to buy a new car and basically my hope is that like for this month I can put aside maybe like $2,000 so when I get paid this week I'll pay off my credit card bills I'll have my auto investments go out and then I think I think I should have enough to put away about $1,000 into my new car fund and then my hope is for the same thing to be able to happen at the end of the month. I think that the my next paycheck actually falls on like March 1st, but you know, like the two paychecks. So that was one of the reasons why I'm doing this low spend challenge is because I am saving up for a new car and I'm at like the, I'm, I'm saving up the last 20%. So I am like almost there and it feels good to be working towards it because some of the money I'm gonna use to buy my new car has been investments that I've had set aside since I was like 16. So it's like, while I feel like I've like earned that money, it's like it's just been there for so long that I just feel like saving up, like truly like not spending and putting this money aside into my new car fund for the last like 20% is going to be very rewarding and it's really putting into perspective like if i want to make this purchase i have to make some lifestyle adjustments so i'm considering like continuing my low spend for march i don't know if that's going to be possible though because i am planning a trip in march we'll see i'm going to focus on one month at a time so my focus is to try to save two thousand dollars in february or like to to put that aside for my car because I still have like my auto investments on and I basically don't want to touch those because those are more important to me than like my auto investments that go into my RSP and my TFSA that's more important to me than buying a new car so the $2,000 would be like on top of it so so far I think I'm on track and it's feeling really good and again I'm proud that I'm doing this because it's been a long time since I've really had a goal that I'm working towards in terms of savings so if you have something that you're saving for i would try a low spend month because then you can really have it in your head of like what you're working towards and for me i just keep thinking about my new car and how you know one month of low spend not even no spend you know just low spend is gonna get me there well it won't get like i still have some saving to do but it'll help me get there like it'll probably be like 5%, I don't know, I'd have to look at the math, but it's like it's getting me closer to my goal and that feels really good, I'm very proud of myself. So it's going really well so far. It is almost halfway through the month, so we're just gonna keep cruising with it, okay? Okay. Hi cuties, it is February 15th and I'm so, so proud of my progress so far. I'm still going strong with just my two non-essential purchases and i just feel great about it honestly like i just have been thinking so much about my lifestyle and how often i spend money on non-essential things and now i don't want to live like this forever like i'm definitely looking forward to spending money again but i think that it's really going to help me cut back because it's been much easier than i thought and my mental health has been good you know like I thought that maybe my mental health would take a dip, but it honestly hasn't. If anything, I feel like better and like more in line with my values and like, you know, I feel so proud that I'm working towards this goal. So I was thinking about this, I was thinking about this this morning and I think that when it comes to money, our identity and like our self-talk contributes so much to our overall like money habits and how we feel about money. And I think for me, 
thinking of this challenge, like I know that I'm someone that is really disciplined. Like when I set out to do a challenge or to do something, like I will do it. And I just don't really have that hard of a time being disciplined when it's something that I really want to accomplish. But I know that some people struggle with discipline. A lot of people struggle with discipline. And so if that's you, I would encourage you to still try a challenge like this because I think that if you were to like set out to cut back on non-essential purchases, even if you don't do it perfectly, which I'm, I haven't done it perfectly and I'm not going to do it perfectly. There's going to be a ton of other things, maybe not a ton. There's going to be other things that are non-essential that I'm going to spend money on for the rest of this month. But for an example, right now, I think I'm at like $1,500 for spending for the month. And in previous months, halfway through the month, I'd probably be around like 3,000. So I've literally cut my spending in half because of doing this challenge. And I think that like, it's all about progress, not perfection. And if you do a challenge like this, I think try and not have that all or nothing mentality. I'm trying to kind of remind myself of that where even though I haven't done the challenge perfectly, the challenge is still going perfectly. Like it's doing what it needs to do. The challenge is challenging. Even though I haven't been perfect, it's doing what it needs to do. So if you've been curious to try something like this, but you're nervous that like, oh, I, I don't think I'll be able to do it. Try it anyways, because at least having the awareness and trying to spend less, you will spend less. Like there's, there's almost no way that you're gonna end up spending more <laughs> than you usually do, you'll likely spend less. So I don't know, you should try it. I highly recommend. I'm really excited to finish the month and then to look back on these clips that I've been filming throughout and see, you know, like I really hope that at the end of the month I look back on this clip and I'm still feeling the same or I'm feeling like really proud and it's going really well. But who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. Like I have a long weekend coming up and a long weekend usually means like going out with friends or like, you know, spending money on things, but I'm not going to do that this weekend. I have to figure out what to do. Anyways, just wanted to check in, tell you that it's going well. I'm proud of myself and that you should do it. If you want to do it, if you're curious about doing it, you should try. And maybe you don't have to do a whole month. Maybe you can do a week or maybe you can do two weeks. I think I'm gonna do this again, maybe not a whole month because like I, I was tempted like, oh, let's just keep going into March. But I do know that I have some expenses coming up in March that are not essential, but they're gonna happen. Like I'm planning for them. And so I don't want to set myself up for failure. So maybe I'll do like, I don't know, a week or maybe, I don't know, we'll see. The world is my oyster. It is February 16th and the challenge, we're still going strong. It's Friday evening and Mac and I both were like, oh, it'd be nice to like go out for like a beer, but that's not within my, that's not really in my, in the cards for me. So it's probably best, you know, to like not drink and to not spend money, but I kind of wanted to spend money. And even tonight, it's like, we're just gonna stay in and chill. And honestly, that's what we do, what we do most Friday nights. But even if we like wanted to like go out to eat or like go to a movie or something, it's like, that's not really within my low spend challenge. So kind of like are forced to stay home tonight, but that's okay. Cause I love being at home. It is February 18th. And today I know that I'm going to be spending on something non-essential. So I'm going out for brunch with some of my friends and old coworkers. And we don't get together that often. Like we probably get together every quarter, if that. And we've been trying to like figure something out and something came together for this morning. We're going out for brunch. And originally I thought like, oh, I could go and I could, you know, just get a coffee and kind of like let them know about my challenge. And I was like, you know what, if I do that, one of them would probably be like, um, let me buy you your breakfast, it's fine. And at that point, it just feels a little bit too extreme, you know? Like again, I'm not doing a no spend challenge, I'm doing a low spend challenge. So I've already looked at the menu. I've been to this place before and the thing that I have my eye on on the menu is delish. And then I looked at like a price of a coffee and I'm pretty sure that I'll spend $30 on brunch this morning, which is not gonna break the bank and is worth it for spending some quality time with some people that I care about. So that'll be my third cheat. But again, I've been, I, I, I decided this like last week when we like made this brunch plan. So it doesn't even really feel like a cheat cause I just like know what's coming, but I just wanted to share that as 
you know, this is not a no spend. And even if it was a no spend, I'd probably cheat and do this, you know? Like, it's not about doing the challenge perfectly, as I've mentioned before. I also keep having dreams that I am forced to spend money. <laughs> I keep getting stranded places, and then I have to go and get the Uber, and the Uber is like astronomically priced. It's funny. I think that I'm just dreaming about needing to spend money on things that are like out of my control, because that's something that has been coming up where like I feel really good with what I've been doing and everything so far has gone to plan and it's all within my control but you never know when something's gonna come up like maybe you get a speeding ticket an unexpected bill comes up or I don't know or you're stranded somewhere you need to grab an uber or something like a safety thing comes up like again like you never really know what's gonna happen so you have to kind of like let you have to like i i know that i keep dreaming about the stuff and clearly i'm on edge but if that stuff were to happen like again it's okay but somehow my mind is stressed about it and so when i'm sleeping i'm dreaming about it but i feel like i'm doing a great job yesterday we went we got groceries from superstore we also went to costco obviously those are essential purchases but that did that was like a couple hundred dollars but my current total is just over $1,700 for the month. Again, if I was doing a normal month, we'd probably be approaching $3,000 at this point. So I'm feeling good, I'm feeling strong, and we have 11 days left. I feel like during this month, I have been reflecting a lot on what's essential and what's not essential. So for right now, I really need a car wash. I mean, it's technically not essential, but I haven't had a car wash in a long time and I feel like it's something I should go and do. Instead of going to the automatic car wash, I am going to go to the manual one and like do it myself so it will be cheaper. But it's kind of funny because I'm not spending on non-essential things. I feel like I'm making up essential purchases <laughs> like this car wash. It is February 23rd and so I only have, what is that, six days left? less than a week left of my low spend challenge and I have been doing amazing. I'm very proud of myself. I am kind of, I'm excited for it to be over, but I'm like really feeling good about not spending money. And I think that I'm going to be able to keep my spending under like $2,000 this month, which normally I spend like at least double that. And so it's just really showing me that like I can live on a lot less than what I do. And I don't want to like impact my quality of life because I like the way that I like I like my lifestyle obviously that's why I choose to have it so it's just giving me a lot to think about but anyways February 23rd feeling good I have four days left of my low spend challenge and we're feeling fantastic absolutely fantastic I can see the end you know the end is near and now I'm just trying to think like okay what's gonna happen when March 1st comes like Am I going to spend money right away? What am I going to buy? And like, I don't want to do that because that's not the point of it. It's like when I did dry January, I didn't drink until like the second week of February. I didn't have a drink until like the second week of February because I was waiting for the perfect opportunity. I didn't want to just like February 1 starts and I have a drink just because. So March 1, I don't want to just spend money because it's March 1. I want to be intentional with it. But something that has come up for me this month is... I obviously haven't bought clothes this whole month and there's been some moments where I really dislike my wardrobe and I feel like this is very relatable. I think that even no matter what your closet looks like or what wardrobe you have, like you always are wanting more or something different and I think for women it can be hard to like find clothes that you love and fit you well and you feel good in and for me it's like a constant struggle and it's funny like one YouTube comment that I got really impacted me i was vlogging and i said that like oh i've worn this sweater so many times i'm gonna try some try to find something different in my closet to wear and i was going through my closet and i was like this is too casual too casual too casual and someone commented on my youtube and it was like oh it seems like you need to buy some more things that you feel comfortable in wearing to work and i was like you're so right like i i'm a director <laughs> i should have work clothes that I feel comfortable in, that I can pull from, that I just know work and I don't really have that. I have a couple of things but because my work setting is pretty casual, we can wear, you know, 
kind of whatever we want. I try to keep it within certain like boundaries, whatever, but I do need more workwear. And so I've started building a list of things that I want to buy for that like workwear. And again, it makes me a bit nervous because I don't want to just March one comes and I just like go to the mall and spend a bunch of money. But in a sense, these are kind of like essentials. Like it is very important for me to like look good and feel good when I'm at work because that contributes to my overall like fulfillment at work you know like when I feel confident then I work better and I'm I show up better and anyways so that comment got me thinking and not in a bad way like in a great way like it just illuminated for me that I think that I have always thought to myself like oh I have enough clothes and like I like them and whatever but that whole situation then that comment was like oh okay maybe I'm not as set up like I'm not set up for success in the way that I want to be so I need to figure that one out, but I'm not gonna try and rush it. I've been trying to like find my personal style and really like build out my wardrobe for like a long time. It's a work in progress for sure. I'm not gonna fix it overnight. But anyways, that was just something that was percolating in my brain. I wanted to share it with y'all. But yeah, four days left, we can do this. We're getting through it and it's been, it's been a really good experience. So I'm super happy that I have done it and i'm hoping that i don't spend any more money like non-essential in the next four days but if i do whatever i've done so well that like it's chill it's chill it's february 27th and i am so close to being done i literally have two days left and i feel like this part is kind of like the hardest part because i'm like oh well, I'm, I'm almost done you know like i can taste the tapping of the credit card and the ordering things online but I'm doing great like I, I feel so proud of myself and I know that I can make it the next two days but I do have my eye on this one blazer from H&M that keeps on going in and out of stock and so I'm like so tempted to order it it's like $70 and I saw my faves um, Charlie Goss style recommend this blazer and it's just so cute and I've been trying I want to like build up my work wardrobe a little bit and I'm like so tempted to buy this blazer, but I'm like, girl, you literally have two days. So I'm obviously gonna try and hold out until Friday. And even like, I don't really wanna purchase something right on Friday. I may try and wait even more, but because I'm like nearing the end, I'm like, okay, like we're getting there. But I feel pretty good overall. And I've just been reflecting on this challenge and yeah i'm just super proud of myself like that's all all there is to it so tomorrow thursday just got to get through it and then friday it'll be march i can't believe that it's gonna be march but so far it's been a sleigh it's february 28th and i have two days left before i can spend money jk jk i mean yes it's true but i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna you know break all of my progress on March 1st, but I am very excited that this challenge is almost done. Uh, yeah, I've got two days, two days left, and today and tomorrow I don't anticipate spending any money. I still need Mac to input all of his expenses into Splitwise. Mac is my boyfriend, if you don't know. <laughs> and we use an app called Splitwise to share our expenses. And I'm pretty sure I know like the things that he's gonna input are like essential. Like he paid when we went to Costco and like there's a couple things, but there could be some sneaky purchases in there that maybe I like forgot about, but it's fine. I can only control what I can control, you know? I'm pretty sure it's fine though. And I'm just, I'm just really proud of myself. And I'm already like, okay, what challenge do I do next? Because I'm gonna miss having a challenge. I was thinking of maybe switching to like a steps challenge. And like, don't worry, I think I was gonna, I think I would do like, f my goal would be to do 5,000 steps in a day, not 10,000. Cause like I have a full-time job and that's just not happening. It's also winter out. And so 5,000 steps means I could, go to the mall and get my steps or I could go to the gym or anyway so I'm considering doing that but I have to figure it out pretty quickly here because I only have a couple days but it's just been so fun to do a challenge and to document a challenge so I just feel like I already want to do another one but I feel like I don't want to do a money one just yet because I need like a break from that you know so I might do like a fitness one and then if there's another like money challenge maybe I'll do a challenge of like trying to make more money you know like trying to find like side income and things like that but that would be a lot of work anyways i'm gonna figure it out but i am loving doing a challenge because it gives me something to focus on and especially in the winter like it's 
the dark days here and it's really nice to have something to focus on and something like positive to focus on so anyways i'll get back to you on that one but um two days left baby I learned so much this month. I could ramble on for so long about everything that I learned, but I wasn't anticipating learning so much, okay? Like I really went through it this month, but like kind of in a good way. So the first thing that I learned is that I can exist, survive, thrive even on way less money than I thought that I could. So if you watch my what I spend in a month videos, you know that I'm pretty comfortable with my spending. On average, I would say I probably spend about $4,000 Canadian a month. And I'm comfortable with that because I'm able to hit my investing goals. So if I'm able to hit my investing goals, I'm pretty much okay with spending whatever, if that means it's like contributing to my quality of life. However, this month I spent literally less than half of my average monthly spending and I had a pretty good month. And so that's telling me that sometimes spending more money does not equal better quality of life. I mean, I, I, sh I knew this, like it's just, I didn't know it in practice for myself. I think that I've been justifying a lot of my spending by being like, oh, well, I deserved it because of this, or it was worth it because of this. And there's room for that for sure, but I don't need to do that with every purchase. And I don't need to do that with literally thousands of dollars every month. So I think moving forward, I'm gonna be a lot more like cognizant of what I'm spending my money on. And I just know that I can live off of less than $2,000 a month if I need to and if I want to. The other thing that I learned is that I soothe myself by spending money. So whether it's going shopping, online shopping, ordering takeout, getting myself a coffee, if I'm having a hard time, something that I do to make myself feel better is spend money and I really need to work on that. I think I was worried that my mental health was gonna be really bad this month, but it actually wasn't too bad. I had some challenging times and moments, but I had to like soothe myself in other ways, like journaling, talking to someone, going for a walk, going outside, doing other things other than spend money. And I think like, dare I say, they were more effective than the spending money. Like, I feel like the spending money thing is kind of like covering up my emotions instead of actually processing them. So I just think I have a lot of work to do. The other thing that I learned is that I think that I need to invest in my wardrobe a little bit more because there was days where I looked at my clothes and I wanted to throw it all away. And I think that I just saw some gaps in my, like my wardrobe and I've been trying, I've been working on this. I've been knowing this for a little while that I need to stray away from the fast fashion and go more to like investment pieces and really think about what I'm buying and researching and trying things on in person. And I just like one of the hardest parts of the challenge was not buying any new clothing because I didn't get that like dopamine hit of buying something new and being able to like wear it the next day. And I just, that was hard, but I think that if I invest in my wardrobe a little bit more, I maybe wouldn't feel that way because I'd have things that I love and I love the way that they look and how I feel in them. And so I wouldn't be like wanting for something else. I also just learned that I have amazing discipline and whatever I set my mind to, I can accomplish. I kind of knew this about myself. Like there are some areas that I'm not confident in, but my discipline, my self-discipline is something that I'm very confident in. I. As like an introverted person, I live a lot of my life like just in my head. As like an introverted, anxious, girly that like has just like racing thoughts all the time. Like I live a lot in my own head and like with myself in my own little bubble. And there's some negatives to that for sure. But one of the positives is that I can keep myself really focused and disciplined because I have like very good like self-control and self-awareness almost like too self-aware but anyways i just learned that like i learned i'm amazing <laughs> no when it comes to certain things i'm amazing and one of those things is i have great self-discipline and i'm really proud of myself for completing this challenge and like excelling in the challenge if i do say so myself so i learned that i have a lot of strength within me and i can take that and apply it to other areas of my life where i maybe don't feel as strong as i do so yeah, that's all I'll say for now. More on that later. Okay, so I asked people to send me through questions about this challenge on Instagram. So I am now going to answer them. Thank you if you submitted a question. There's some really good ones in here. So let's kick things off. First question, I'm doing this in March. Yay! Curious, what is non-essential to you? So I kind of covered that already. Um, but she asks, extra snacks, activities, travel. So travel to me, non-essential. That was a no-go. Activities, also non-essential, no-go. 
And I mean, if I was doing this for longer, I'd have to reevaluate what, what is a necessary activity because like, I do think that like, you know, for a happy, healthy life, you need to be like doing activities and like some entertainment is like required and you don't want to deprive yourself. But for one month, I was fine, like no activities. Usually Mac and I go to the movies like once a month, but we didn't do that. So that was not essential to me. Extra snacks, totally fine, but from the grocery store. I didn't buy any food from like a coffee shop or like a restaurant or anything. Our grocery bill did end up being a little bit higher because of this, because of the like we have food at home, but I was okay with it. What will you do with the money that you end up saving? Do you have a specific goal? Yes, so my goal was to put away as much money as I could towards a new car fund. So I'm kind of just like topping up my new car fund. I'm like almost there, but I needed a little bit more cash. And so my goal was to put away $2,000 and I ended up hitting that goal. So I think having a goal really helped because Part of my goal was to like reset my habits and just to do this like personal challenge, but then a big part of the goal was to save up some cash for my new car. What if something you really want goes on sale? Not buying it. I'm just not buying it. At least this month, it was just like, nope. I also don't really like watch things that like I really want to see if they go on sale because I, again, I try and like, I'm not, I'm trying to like work on like my consumerism, you know? So I don't really like do the whole like, oh, I watch to see if it's on sale. Okay. What things are you willing to sacrifice for a low spend month? Literally everything. <laughs> I mean, for one month, I was willing to sacrifice all of those non-essential things. And if I was doing this for longer, I'd have to reevaluate that list. But for one month, I tried to sacrifice like everything that I could. Someone asked how, lol. And I appreciate this question because I know that this is a hard, a hard thing to do. And it also depends on your circumstances and your lifestyle. Like I have a lot of privileges that allow me to not spend money, if that makes sense. Like I have a car so I can drive myself places. You know, maybe someone else would have to pay money on like public transit or Uber. Although I would consider that essential purchases. But anyways, how? I'm very disciplined and I'm very proud of that. When I set my mind to something, like I can do it. So how I did it, just like honestly some mental toughness. What's been the hardest and easiest thing to not spend money on? So the hardest was definitely in those moments of like self-soothing. Probably the coffee's out was a big one that was hard. But the easiest, it was pretty easy. Like once I told myself like, no, nah, you're just not spending on anything non-essential, like I was able to stick to it. And I also knew it was for a limited time, so that helped. And this also is kind of an interesting question when people are saying like, how do you do it? How do you have the self-discipline? Like, I feel very grateful and privileged that I can do a challenge like this to be like, oh, I'm not gonna spend any money on anything non-essential. Some people like don't have the luxury of choosing to not spend money on things non-essential. They just simply don't have the funds to do it. So I think that I went into this challenge like with gratitude being like, I feel really grateful to be in a place where I can choose to try to curb my spending and I'm not in a place where I have to. So that really helped me is like I'm choosing and like I'm in a good place and some people are forced into living a frugal lifestyle and living without certain things and I feel for those people and I also like even had to think about that like is this weird or like is this inappropriate or offensive for me someone that can afford you know like the four thousand dollar month lifestyle to be trying to spend less but i think if you know me you know i'm coming at it from a good place and i'm wanting to do this fun little personal challenge for myself and i do recognize and understand my privilege and um i am very grateful that i get to do this because i want to and not because i have to someone asked how do you get the self-restraint i kind of touched on this before but I don't know, I think practice helps. Like if you do challenges or you invest in like personal development and you know, working on yourself, like it's a muscle that you have to flex of like sacrificing things in the short term for long-term gain. So I think I've just had some practice with it and now I'm like pretty good at it. Is there anything you are stocking up in groceries to avoid while buying out? Yeah, everything. Like I didn't buy anything. I didn't buy any food or drink while, while out. Well, there's one time, but I, I, I fessed up to y'all. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have food at home. That was my motto. Just ate at home all month long. That was such a fun challenge. If you're thinking of doing a low spend challenge, please do. There's kind of only upside. Like you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna save some money and it's just an experience to go through. So if you've been considering it, I would highly recommend doing it. If you don't think you could do a month, try a week. 
try a weekend try a work week anything that you can do try a day if you're really like don't think that you can do it try a day then try a week then try a month but it was really really fun i would love to do another video like this like if there's another kind of financial challenge that you'd like me to do like i am all for it i love creating videos like this especially when it's following you throughout like the whole month because you get to see not just me sitting here talking about the month but me actually going through the month so if you enjoyed this video i would really appreciate if you could leave me a comment and tell me what you liked about it like this video if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do and yeah i just hope you enjoyed this video because like i really enjoyed making it and so i'd like to do more of these moving forward but thank you so much for staying till the end i really appreciate you and um we'll see you in my next one okay bye